Hey everyone, this is Pastor Eugene, President at Bread for the World. I thought I would take a few moments to just share with you a little bit about how I'm processing, discerning, praying through a crazy election. It's been a crazy day, crazy week, crazy year, 2020. Wow, so many challenges during this time. Uh, like you, I have been feeling some of the human emotions of anxiety, fear, concern, discouragement, all of these things. I'm just trying to be very candid that I've been feeling these things as well. And as followers of Jesus, it doesn't mean that we don't wrestle with these things. But I'm also very certain that God doesn't want us to languish in these spaces. And so I just want to speak with you in hopes that this might encourage you. Now, the results of the election are unknown. It will likely be contested, which means that we're going to be in the season of the unknown for the next several weeks. Now, having said that, when there's chaos and anxiety, this is the perfect time for the church to be reminded again who we are as followers of Jesus. We're imperfect people who bumble and stumble away, but whoever is elected as president, no matter what happens in Congress, no matter what happens in your local or state elections, the vision of the capital C church, it has never, ever changed. We're called to be light and salt, to be ambassadors of the whole gospel, this gospel that declares that Jesus loves the world, that Jesus loves people, that Jesus loves those who are forgotten and marginalized, the vulnerable, that Jesus is good news, that Jesus saves, and that Jesus is also at work in our culture and society, redeeming and restoring and reconciling the world unto himself. Now, you'll have to forgive me. I'm not trying to preach a sermon here. But I want to just share a few things in hopes that this might encourage you and give you not just comfort, but also conviction and strength during this time. Here's the first thing that I want to share with you. I want to remind us that, yes, politics matter because it shapes policies which impact people. And as I shared earlier, God cares about people. Bread is a Christian advocacy organization headquartered in DC with lots of grassroots organizers. And so we're engaged in the political process through the lens of scripture and our conviction that Jesus loves people, especially those who experience hunger and poverty. But even as I affirm all of these things, I want to also tell you that politics is not the most important thing. It's not the place where our ultimate hope and trust and faith rest in. This is very important. Yes, it's important, but it's a reminder, especially during this crazy, chaotic, anxiety-filled election week, that our ultimate trust, our ultimate faith, it resides, it rests in Jesus Christ, our rock and our savior. I'm not trying to distract people from what's going on. I'm not trying to play theological gymnastics about God's sovereignty. When I speak of God's sovereignty, I'm not suggesting that everything that happens in the world is God's will, but I am suggesting in this truth that God still remains in control, that God still rests on his throne and he hasn't abandoned his creation. He hasn't abandoned us. It's for that reason we could have hope. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23 is a scripture verse that I have recited to myself countless times this year. And Hebrews 10, 23 says these words, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. So as we engage the political process, as we seek to be light and salt, our ultimate hope resides in Jesus Christ. Number two, if we believe that, then we can't transact in the currency of fear. And I feel like our society 
operates on the currency of fear, of scarcity, of basically being about me, myself, and I. And as a result, we can so much vilify and demonize anyone and everyone that disagrees with me. Now, friends, please listen. I'm not trying to say that we should be soft about our commitment to justice and truth-telling. But I also want us to be careful and be wise to not dehumanize those that we disagree with because sometimes in our own self-righteousness we can become the very things that we prophetically seek to criticize in others. I hope you hear this well. As Christians, our ultimate allegiance is to Jesus and to the kingdom of God. The scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, not to political parties, to politicians, to powerful people. Our ultimate allegiance, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And here's the thing, the kingdom of God, it is so countercultural. It is so subversive. No party can fully encompass the kingdom of God. For example, the kingdom of God tells us, calls us, to follow a prince of peace in a culture that seeks to wield power to somehow just dominate others. The kingdom of God introduces us to Jesus, the prince of peace, who comes to wash dirty feet, who comes to serve people and not to be served. The kingdom of God that tells us to love our enemies the kingdom of God that tells us to turn the other cheek. The kingdom of God that reminds us to care for those who seek to do ill against us. It is scandalous and crazy, which is the reason why the church, we have to be reminded that our ultimate allegiance is to this kingdom and to Jesus Christ. Here's the last thing that I'll share with you, that this is a time for us not just to cast one vote every two or four years. Yes, we're called to be good civic citizens, but it's really about discipleship. That's what it's about. What does it mean to embody our faith, not just during a church service for a 50-minute online virtual YouTube Zoom service in this pandemic world, once a week, but what does it mean to live out our faith every single day? You see, tomorrow, I want you to know that uh, we're still going to live in a country where 14 million children are experiencing hunger. When you wake up the next day, we're living in a world where 270 million human beings created in the image of God around the world are experiencing extreme hunger. I can go on and on. This is why the church, the capital C church, why you and I, we have to take our discipleship faithfully, with integrity, passionately, and seriously. We can't do this alone, which is why I'm saying the capital C church, it's about all of us being reminded about what it means to be light and salt. So with that in mind, I think we just need more prayer because prayer precedes action. Starting on November 6th, I wanna just invite you personally, would you consider joining me, my colleagues at Bread for the World? We want to just invite you to a time of prayer for 20 straight days especially after this election season of so much volatility, so much polarization, so much division and pain in our country. We want to call us to a time of prayer as we pray for ourselves, as we pray for the other, as we pray for the vulnerable, as we pray for our leaders, as we pray for those who are hungry, as we pray for God's will to be done. I hope you'll be able to join me. Check out this link here just for more information. And I hope that you'll join us 
as we seek to represent God's kingdom in D.C. and beyond. Thank you. God bless you.